I grew up with a very non-technical background, a family business, which I worked for from the time I was old enough to work uh, until just before I went to grad school, um, was the restaurant business. And so that's a very non-technical space, traditionally, especially at the time I was working at. And you know, a lot of delivery platform companies didn't exist. Um, we really had basic and very antiquated at the time point of sale systems and that's pretty much what there was with a server in the back, like really old school. So I didn't have much exposure, always had an interest, but wasn't a developer, didn't really know how to get into it. And was interested in pivoting my career out of the restaurant business, at least temporarily, and decided to go to grad school. Uh, I guess not the reason most people go to grad school, but I went there and, and focused on as many different industries as I could, learned as much as I could, uh, studied international business and was able in that program to go to Israel for two weeks and to China for two weeks. And what we did was visit all different types of companies from all different industries. And you know, we went to places like Alibaba in China, pre-IPO, we got to go into their data room and have real-time metrics pinging from all over the world. And I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. We went to venture capital funds, we went to biotech companies in Israel. I mean everything you can imagine. And we went to a uh, kibbutz, a uh, community farm over in Israel, and there was a huge focus on sustainability and um, waste mitigation and uh, I guess finding ways to, to use less water, use fewer resources. And there was a company called Metatheme and it's a slow drip irrigation system. You can see it in any country all over the world and it's really cool and I just thought that aspect. So I did a, a follow-up project fo focusing on, um, you know, I guess sustainability and, and resource management and fell in love with both applications, technology, sustainability. I think the most important thing that it taught me is you can't have true sustainability without technology. I mean, that's the basis for measuring achievements. A lot of companies, a lot of organizations, nonprofits have set goals for achieving sustainability, waste diversion, um, climate change prevention. We can't do that without really advanced technology systems to collect from the most basic information to using the highest levels of data science to to aggregate that and measure that and predict that. Are we on track, are we not? So I think, you know, early on thinking about that those two things have to go together in order to be a market leader and to truly drive and create impact industry by industry, business by business, I guess individual household by individual household, um, we don't get there without really good tech in it. And that's definitely what Rubicon's focus is. About halfway through grad school, I was taking a, a trip that landed in many, many delays that day due to weather, but I ended up sitting next to this man that uh, happens to be the CEO of Rubicon, Nate Morris, and uh, he asked me what I wanted to do. And I had a, a University of Kentucky vest on, and for those that know him, uh, he's you know on the, on the board of the business school where I went for undergrad. and. We started talking about, you know, what was next for me in my career when I graduated. And uh, he told me a little story about the company he had, and I thought it was perfect. It was the perfect marriage of technology, sustainability, and that's really where I wanted to be. It was a no-brainer for me. We ended up finding a role that made a lot of sense for me right out of school, and uh, I haven't looked back since. I would say that you need to leverage your network. Um, your network can always grow and improve, but I think that the point that you start the business, the people that either advise you, are your mentors, or invest in you, um, are going to be your greatest assets moving forward. And most often those are the people that encourage you to start the business in the first place. If you have a good idea or they just know that you know, you're, you're pretty capable of, of doing um, 
something profound from the business side of things. Often when you are in the world of tech, you have to raise a friends and family round to get the business off the ground before you can go out and raise institutional capital. And uh, friends and family are, have been some of our greatest cheerleaders through a pandemic as a really early business and you know potentially a recession. I think those, like I said, are, are the greatest cheerleaders that you have. And some of our earliest backers, our earliest you know, co-visionaries, if you will. So um, leveraging people that you've known your whole life and, and different industries and don't be afraid to reach out. You know, there's people that I knew when I was growing up that I hadn't seen in 10 years, but I knew that they knew a lot about the industry we were getting into. And uh, it can be nerve wracking, you know, as a young entrepreneur, but be confident. And I think people are always willing to help you, especially if you've known them a long time or they know um, what you're capable of. Reach out and it's crazy where some of the conversations can go. Um, it's been really helpful to us to, to leverage our network. That's truly how we got started and got the business off the ground. Native is an artificial intelligence platform that services the consumer packaged goods and consumer brands industry. Essentially what we do is solve a problem that's really challenging for brand managers, marketing managers, and R&D managers of these companies today. So consumers become pickier and pickier, expect more of their brands and rightfully so in terms of sustainability being one of the, the biggest items there. And there's chatter all over the web, more and more reviews. Uh, are prevalent, you know, the more sales channels you sell through on the e-commerce side of things, there's information everywhere. And in those roles, it's really hard to aggregate that information. So what we do is first um, aggregate information into a centralized, easy to use dashboard. Uh, we can collect things like their UPC codes, um, Amazon IDs, pull all the reviews per product. And then we organize that accordingly to make it make sense and how they want to run reporting. How are we performing at Target with this group of consumers, with this product category, versus the Walmart consumer? Because those are very different types of consumers for us. And that's something that's not easy to do today. You can manage sales data, but we really focus on qualitative. And uh, that's never really been easy to do before. Uh, we use a specific form of artificial intelligence called natural language processing. So once the information is organized, we run it through our NLP engine and it draws insights and fractions of a second. So what do people think about, you know, freshness, flavor, packaging, value for money, texture, if we're talking about fashion products, um, you know, we can do everything like cosmetics, uh, we can measure, you know, brand metrics, make it easy for these guys to, to funnel back into R&D. People don't like this about our product, they love this. Well, that also relates to how we should manage SEO for our products on Amazon, Walmart, Whole Foods, um, any of the retailers that we're in. And then uh, finally, you know, what kind of language should we be using on our website? How should we relay the messaging to consumers, loyal consumers, first time consumers? Um, what language do they associate with our product and our brand as a whole? So ultimately what we do is tighten that feedback loop between brands, consumers, and um, leverage technology to do it in a pretty cool way.